Hi guys, it's Tabitha and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this unique pop-up 3D Polaroid camera effect. So obviously, the first thing that we need to do to start is to create a new composition. Here are my composition settings. So once you have your composition created, you can drag in your Polaroid camera picture. I'll leave a link of the PNG that I've used in the description box down below. And then you are going to click S on your keyboard or go to transform and scale and then scale up the size of your picture to your liking. And then you're going to pre-compose the layer and make sure that the last two boxes are checked. Now we are going to click command Y on our keyboard or create a new solid layer and choose the color of your liking. And you are going to drag that new solid layer beneath the camera picture. And I went ahead and turned on motion blur for both layers, although this isn't necessary. So now you're going to click G on your keyboard or go to the pen tool and create a mask on the solid layer. However, it's going to be around the shape of the Polaroid camera. And once your mask is complete, go down to mask settings and change the expansion to 70 to create this new border around the camera picture. Now you're going to pre-compose both of the layers together. And once they are pre-composed together, you may go ahead and scale down the layer to your liking. So now we are going to focus on making the actual Polaroid. I dragged in two layers as you can see, the picture that I chose to use and the Polaroid frame outline. And once again, I'll link the specific Polaroid outline that I used in the description box. So now you're going to scale up the layers of the Polaroid frame and the picture as much as possible, placing the picture beneath the frame and positioning it to your liking. Now this part is optional, but you can go ahead and create a new text layer and write whatever you want to put on the bottom of the Polaroid frame. But personally, I chose to use this opportunity to put in my watermark into the transition. And I made the text layer black, and the font that I used was Lemon Milk by Defont, and I'll link it down below. Now you can pre-compose all of the layer elements creating the Polaroid together. And scale down that new layer to about 40. Next, click the 3D box next to Motion Blur to make the Polaroid a 3D shape. Now either click R on your keyboard or go down to the rotation settings and change the X rotation to minus 39. And go ahead and change the Y rotation to minus 10. I also went ahead and changed the Z rotation to minus 20. Now go ahead and change the scale and position of the Polaroid to make it look like it's coming out of the camera. But before we animate the Polaroid, we are going to go ahead and duplicate the camera layer and create a mask on the top camera layer of the camera's top half. So the camera's top half would be the part just above the slot where the Polaroid comes out. So create a mask like the one that you see on the screen. As you can see, the top edging is hidden by the top Polaroid camera layer. Now I'm going to click P on my keyboard or go to the position transformation options of my layer and I'm going to keyframe the position of the Polaroid in the middle of my clip. And for this particular keyframe, I'm going to go ahead and hide the Polaroid frame under both of the camera layers so that you cannot see it. Then go more towards the end of your clip and now position the Polaroid to be coming out of the camera and this will automatically create a new keyframe. And just go ahead and drag the second keyframe to the end of your clip. And this is what our transition looks like so far. Go ahead and highlight both of your keyframes, right click and click Easy Ease them, and go ahead and copy my graph too. Now I went ahead and highlighted all of the layers and pre-composed them all together. And we'll go ahead and cut the clip to where you want your transition to start. This is optional of course, but I'm just doing this because I'm going to be adding in a new background transition into this composition as well. Now based on where we cut off our Polaroid layer, I went ahead and created a zoom and transition at the beginning of the clip. You can also add in a shake if you would like to. Specifically, I added in a Y shake to make my composition more dynamic. I'll leave my tutorial in the description box on how to get my specific shake. And now you can go ahead and create the background of your choice. In my case, I decided to create a rotation transition in the background and use a butterfly overlay on top. I also used many effects such as optics composition, minimax, and different blurs to create my desired effect. And so far, this is what my final transition looks like. 
And if you also want to add a drop shadow to your camera layer, you can right click and go to layer styles and then click on drop shadow. And you can go ahead here and copy my settings of changing the opacity to 100% and changing the size to 90. I would also recommend dragging in a burst overlay to put in the background behind your camera. I'll leave a link to the specific overlay I used in the description box as well. So I just sized up the overlay and dragged it underneath my camera layer and then right clicked on it and went to time and then went to enable time remapping just because I wanted to remap the speed of the overlay. You can also right click on the layer and go to blending mode and click it to screen. So now the black disappears. I also went ahead and pre-composed all of the layers together again, so that way I could add in a new adjustment layer, and then cut the adjustment layer for when the Polaroid comes out of the camera. For me, this was exactly halfway through my composition. And at this point, you can drag in brightness and contrast to the layer, and turn up the brightness to 150, and then duplicate that effect on the same layer. Then click T on your keyboard or go down to Opacity, and keyframe the opacity of that adjustment layer at 100 at the beginning of the clip, and then at zero towards the end of the clip. So now once you play your composition through completely, you can see that as soon as the Polaroid comes out, it also has a flashing effect, making it look more realistic. I also went ahead and pre-composed all of the layers together again, and then created new transitions for the beginning and ending of my composition. Personally, I added in a warp and zoom transition at the beginning and the end. And now this is the final product. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching my new video. If you enjoy my content, I would really appreciate it if you went ahead and subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!